My name's Andrew Taylor, I'm an Associate Professor at uh, the Alfred Hospital and I also research at the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Research Institute in Melbourne, Australia. I spoke about uh, imaging uh, myocardial fibrosis and heart failure and broadly speaking uh, this topic is divided into regional and diffuse fibrosis. Uh, now uh, regional fibrosis is really well characterised with cardiac MRI with the technique of late gadolinium enhancement. Uh, it was initially used to look at myocardial viability post infarction uh, but data over the last 10 years have really shown you get regional fibrosis in a lot of cardiomyopathies uh, such as uh, idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, sarcoid uh, involvement in the heart in patients with sarcoidosis. And the interesting thing in these patients uh, is that the presence of uh, regional fibrosis is associated with markedly out adverse outcomes. In particular, it appears to be a focus for ventricular arrhythmias uh, acting, acting as a substrate for a re-entry tachycardia. So it plays a, a clear prognostic role and may actually have a role to play in the management of patients with uh, more severe cardiomyopathy, whatever the cause. Uh, in the second part of the talk I looked into the question of interstitial fibrosis or diffuse fibrosis that we know is present in a lot of patients with advanced uh, cardiomyopathy but really can't be imaged with the traditional techniques with cardiac MRI of late gadolinium enhancement but we've developed uh, a sequence using T1 mapping with cardiac MRI whereby the, uh, the T1 time of the myocardium is altered in the presence of fibrosis and this is a way to quantitatively assess uh, the amount of inter interstitial fibrosis. So we and others have shown that the uh, post contrast T1 time clearly correlates quite well with histological uh, fibrosis measured on biopsy. Uh, others have also looked at other methods including uh, the T1 time without contrast and, e and also the combination of the two looking at ECV, the extracellular volume, uh, all of which uh, correlate with interstitial fibrosis. Uh, the important uh, thing about this is that uh, we believe interstitial fibrosis is an important mechanistic link between uh, cardiac stiffness in diastolic heart failure uh, and it's also clearly got a role to play in ventricular remodelling and systolic heart failure where it uh, predicts adverse outcomes uh, and in a number of uh, studies across a wide variety of cardiomyopathies there have been demonstrated altered T1 times or altered ECV such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, remodelling following infarction, atrial fibrillation and the list goes on. Importantly uh, the presence of interstitial fibrosis uh, identified with cardiac MRI uh, can uh, inform the prognosis. So uh, in a number of different groups including a unselected population, diabetics, patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and also patients with systolic heart failure. So it clearly has an important role to play as well. So in conclusion really we found that uh, the regional fibrosis that you can uh, identify and quantify with cardiac MRI is important and it plays a pro prognostic role and probably a lot of that prognosis is driven through ventricular arrhythmias where it may act as a substrate for uh, ventricular tachycardia and so forth whereas interstitial fibrosis uh, provides an important link between the structure and the remodeling of the heart and the physiology and both of these uh, techniques will help to guide future management and treatment options in heart failure.